You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Relax. Welcome to I'm Colleen Ballinger and there's so much cat hair on my microphone. Is this, have you not noticed this before? No, I have, but it's like. This has been a constant struggle. It's particularly bad today. Anyway, I'm Colleen Ballinger. This is. I'm Eric. Stockland, my husband. And in our house, just the atmosphere of it, cat hair just free, freely flows around. And just lands on everything in our mouths, on our microphones. Mm -hmm. Oh man. It's on the brim of your hat. It's everywhere. Your Fievel goes west hat. It's, it was just in your mouth. Just in my mouth. Yeah, this is actually Flynn's hat that I'm wearing today. I mean, it is mine. I bought it, but then I put it on Flynn because I thought it would be cute. And I was not wrong. It was very cute. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but then, and it fit him, surprisingly, him being two years old. It, I know. And he's got head, a big noggin. his head is in the uh, the 98th percentile. It is. He's got a big noggin. It big just brain. It means he's super smart. It means he's smart. You the know, smartest. that used to be the thing you said you love most about me. When people would say, what do you love most about Clayton? You'd always say her brain. Her hat size. Which I don't know if that's a compliment or a diss to my looks. <laughs> I think it was a compliment to your intellect. No, I never took yeah. it that way. Um, I never took it in a negative way. I thought it was a very sweet thing to say. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's got a big noggin, love. Got a big noggin. And so do we. You know what they say, big noggin. Ruined lady bits. No hats. Well, okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> That's where my brain goes after my experience. Anyway, hey wow. We're going to relax our Good weird podcast. Start. So today I'm actually super excited. We are going to be watching the third episode. You've got here in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be watching the third episode of Haters Back Off together. Yay. This is always really fun for us. I don't know if you guys enjoy it, and um, I guess it doesn't matter because we're doing it anyway, even if you don't. But it is really fun for us because I have not watched the show in years, and I really have not watched this episode in years. I barely remember. I feel like I have. Uh, yeah, it's been three years since I've yeah, seen it. So, or at three least. Or four. four. I think it came four. out in, um, I think this, uh, the, this season came out in 2016. I don't remember. Which would have been the last time that I watched it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember when. So is that? That's almost five. Well, it came I'm out not in good October. at math, but I, know I feel like that's like five October, years ago. Oh yeah, so almost five years ago then. Four and a half. Don't make us, don't date Whoa. us that much, you know. It was not long, oh, I mean it was. God. Anyway, um, yeah, we're gonna watch the episode three and I feel like I've seen bits and pieces of like episode one or the finale or like big moments in episodes, but episode three, I feel like I really have not seen anything yeah. from it in a very long time. I feel like all those behind the scenes memories are just going to come flooding I know, back. It might be a long episode. So it might be who interesting. Knows? Hopefully. But, uh, but for, before we get into any of that, we obviously need to talk about who needs to relax today. Colleen, who needs to relax this week? You, uh, do I have to go first? I didn't think of anything. So I didn't yeah. think of anything either. Oh no. I guess we need to relax. Um, we need to, there are so, I What's frustrating is I think of things all day, every day. Yeah. And then... Maybe our listeners do too. And then I can never remember them when... We're, like, I'm on the spot, you know? And I'm like, you know what needs to relax? What's that? I, I, this is one of many things that I've thought of this week that just popped back into my brain. Okay. I think TV shows that still come out on like a weekly schedule need to relax. Like, including your show, Good Trouble. Yeah. Like, I don't want to wait a week. Come on. I don't we're either. We're past that now. We're I know. past that now. Like, can we just... We as a society have evolved until we're just going to watch the whole show at once. Come on. We want to binge watch. Yeah. And this is what we've grown accustomed to with all these new, like, internet-based networks. And so when people we are like... We can't go backwards. I, like, like, Handmaid's Tale came out, right? And uh-huh. I've been waiting like a year, at least, I feel, for Handmaid's Tale to come out again. I feel like it's been longer. It's been so long. She gave... She gave that, put that baby over Don't the... give us spoilers. Oh, okay. Don't give us spoilers. But yeah, but Handmaid's Tale is a, is a really um, intriguing, wonderful show that I love. And I have been looking forward to this. And I saw that the whole season did not come out because it never does. It's always like kind of weekly. And right. I was like, meh, Worth it. worthless. Don't do you, watch it. Do you have the patience to be like, I'll wait until there's more episodes so then I can watch? No, I'll probably lose interest. Binge. That's yeah. the problem is that like by the time they're all out, I'll be like, Man, I don't care anymore. It's like, put them all out. You've already waited a year. And, and it's not even like I watch them all in a row. It's like I watch an episode a night, but you I want to watch them. You just need to know them. that you can. I, I, I need to know that I can. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know that like, we have a routine, you and me. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like we put the kid to bed. We make ourselves dinner. We the have kid. some nice chats. And then we watch a show. 
You know, like we watch mm-hmm. a show together while like we and do Legos or do And I constantly have to pause it as thoughts pop into your head of, of yes, a story that you needed course. to tell me. So we watch something and I'm pausing it. Constantly. Constantly. But we have a thing. And so I don't want to watch that show tonight and then watch a different show tomorrow. Like we watch a sh- the same thing every night until we're done with that show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like the fact that I'm like, well, I can watch it tonight, but then I have to watch something different tomorrow. Nah. And then I have to wait a week to come back and watch it again. Like, I'm not going to remember what happened. I don't remember what ha- I don't remember what I ate for lunch. I don't remember right. what I did yesterday. I'm not going to remember what happened on the show last week. So I think shows that are still releasing their TV shows on a weekly schedule. Relax. Just give us, give it all to us. You people like, why do you do that? Yeah, and then Don't good trouble, that. good trouble was coming on every week, and now they're like, ah, oh, mid season finale. I know, We're gonna what? take is a- that trash because, <laughs> like, no, it's a good trouble. Like, this is your job, so I don't, I'm not gonna talk negatively about it. Maybe, you know maybe it's show, like, like it's old school, it's like building suspense. Don't care. You'll look it's forward old school. to Grow it. Up. Grow up. Because with movies that are coming out, they'll be like, this movie's coming out, and the trailer will come out, and the movie won't come out for a year, mm-hmm. and even longer now because of like COVID. You know what That's I mean? That's not the same thing. It would be like if they're like, here's half the episode. No, you can't watch the next half of the episode. Let's, that's what they're doing with Good Trouble. Like, here's half the season. And I know what happens. I've, I've read your scenes with you. Uh-huh. As you, Because he's still shooting scenes that are not going to come out until later this year. Right. And I'm like, I have to wait that long to like watch you do these scenes that we've... Ugh, it's really annoying, love. I'm kind of happy about it because it was stressful filming it while it was airing. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's well, so I feel like that now was kind of when stressful. Good, when those episodes come out, you're, we're I'll gonna, be done. Yeah, you're going to be done, but we're going to be like, when did that happen? Like we're not going to remember any of it. That's going to be so long from now. I'll remember. Well, I, I lived it. I guess so. But anyway, if you haven't seen Eric on Good Trouble, he's on a lot of this season of Good Trouble and he's wonderful. You guys should check it out. But anyway, that's Who Needs to Relax Aww. for me. And Lovey, Who Needs to Relax for you? Let's see. What do we got here? Oh, get a life. Grande iced grit lot iced green two, tea two latte. Pumps. Oh, is that what grit stands for? Yeah, green tea. Grande iced green tea latte iced two pumps chai vanilla sweet cream cold foam. That's my drink. That's a mouthful. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much of a mouthful that ordering it ahead on the Starbucks app doesn't exist. Not even an option. Um, so, but it's my drink for me, of choice. As your husband slash errand boy. Errand boy? That, okay, do not even claim that. Can you ask me about skinny skinny weeks? When was the last time I asked you? This is how you sound, by the way. When was the last time I asked you for a service? yourself in the recordings I, of this, but you sound like this. Can you get a skinny weeks? Sure. Get a skinny weeks, I can take that, but I cannot take lies and blasphemy. When was the last time I asked you to go get me a Starbucks? Because the uh, answer is. Twice this week at <gasps> least. I'm going to choke on my own saliva. <laughs> that is not accurate at all. Me. Never a love grande, you. Grande grande cold brew black. <laughs> Done. Sure. That's fine. And you can hate my drink and you can hate my drink order. You can hate everything about it. But no, you I'm cannot just saying it's a... send lies of blasphemy into the universe that you are errand boy <laughs> yes. and I make you go give me you have not gotten me one of these. Probably, probably like twice in your life. Because I haven't been able to memorize the monologue yet. <laughs> I've been working on no, the monologue which with an fine. acting coach. Say that. Grande, okay, let me do it. Grande, mm-hmm. green tea latte. Uh huh. I'm not looking, by the way, if you're iced, listening. Grande, green tea latte, iced, vanilla chai, cold foam supreme. No. Value size. No. Ugh. Two pumps of chai, love. Ah. Uh. And the sweet cream cold foam on top, on the tippity top. Whoa. It's delish. Shakespeare himself it's like, uh, is you, jealous. It's so good. Oh, God, I sneeze. Oh, allergies are Where in town Where did you hear now. of this drink? This is surely, TikTok, surely not something that you came up with yourself. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I have allergies, guys. Um, I heard about it on TikTok, and I tried it because I always try like TikTok trends, and this one was a total win. <laughs> And when, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm and be when she Hello. says, when she says when, what she means is this is a drink that I can satisfyingly take two to three sips out of. It's half gone, love. Are you kidding me? It, this is where you stop. This yeah. is where. Yeah, I drink so, half of it. So at some point a week from now, I will find this mm-hmm. uh, container of three quarters beverage that you now know. And uh, it will at that point have congealed. It will have formed. It's, it starts it's to own, rot. Um, it starts to rot. Evolution is happening inside of this cup at that point. Yeah. And I, I will uh, empty three or four of them at a time I'm into just a sink. Let nature do its thing. 
And I'm trying to create new organisms in the world. Is this like an Earth Day thing? Yeah, it's like a science thing. I'm trying to teach Flynn about Ah, science science. and like, you know, we all want a new pet. So it's like, oh, you know, maybe I can make a new pet out of this. Little bugs and things, little new organisms that have grown from nothing. Yeah. If there's anything you love, it's bugs. I love bugs. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Anyway. Uh, um, Your drink order at Starbucks needs to relax. Thanks. Yeah. I guess I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I also agree that you need to relax saying that you're Aaron boy. I almost threw up on your face when you said that. I said it because I knew you would. Okay. Um, I heard you saying, um, as you were speaking to me in a conversation, I heard (laughs) you say to me (laughs) that you wrote a song for today. Oh yeah. So before we get into haters, uh, I did. I wrote a, I mean, I, it's, this was like a quick come up with, but I wrote, I wrote a little, um, I want to hear it, uh, as I do Apple podcast review song. Uh, yeah, I was, I was looking at the reviews there and Mm -hmm. someone was kind enough to leave us a, um, a five star review, which, uh, if you're feeling frisky, go ahead and do yourself. Only if you're feeling Um, frisky though. And I, I thought it was sweet. It uh, it was from, um, a person named Lila. I love that name. Beautiful name. <gasps> um, and they said, oh, wow, that's I, which I thought was so sweet because it was, wasn't something I really considered um, that they they fall asleep to our podcast. The, the soothing sounds of our podcast. And I thought of that my... was so sweet. And I wondered if we could, I don't, hi Lila, uh, if we could help help a little bit okay. to, for her to fall asleep. So I wrote a little okay. lullaby Let me hear it. to Lila. And, uh, and hopefully, Lila, you're listening. And this... Uh, this, this helps you even more so. Let's hear Get it. Get some good Z's. All right, let's so, hear this song okay, for so Lila. A, a lullaby to Lila. Aww. I love your podcast. Thanks, Lila. I love listening to it at night. It helps me. Fall asleep. Well, good night, Lila. Sleep tight, Lila. Hush now, Lila. Sweet dreams, Lila. Sure, we're working our ass off. A new podcast every week. <laughs> and we tell all our stories from behind the scenes. We do all the rest of the podcast. Sure. <laughs> that was great, love. I love a good lullaby. How's that crunchy ice? Delicious. Oh, there's... I just... Did you just... <laughs> wow. You just mi- miyagi a cat hair out of the, <laughs> out of the air. But I love that I was Whoa. impressed. Wait. Pray with yourself. I love that I was so impressed by catching the easiest thing you can catch. Like uh, the slowest moving no, floating it was, hair. It could have only I been more impressive if in the you sky did it with and chopsticks. I, like, <gasps> I couldn't believe it. Um, wow, lovey, that was very impressive. I was extremely, oh, extremely impressed with that beautiful song. Um, you know what else I'm impressed with? I'm going to tell you what I'm impressed with. It's our bed sheets. Oh man, our sheets. I love our bed sheets. You know, we just washed them the other day, uh, as people do, well, as you do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was gonna say we. (laughs) And put them on the bed, 
And it's like they get better. It's like wine. They get better with they, age. It's like a fine no. patina. They're they so age great. well, yes. Our Brooklyn like bed sheets. We love them so much. If a lot of your life is still being lived at home like ours, then make your home as comfortable as possible a refuge. An oasis, some might say. Your personal own zen zone. Go ahead and max out on the extra soft sheets, super plush towels, and loungewear. You can get the best of it all from Brooklyn. Somebody majored in creative writing. And it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn Inn was started to create beautiful, high quality home essentials that don't cost an arm and a leg. And people, what a success. Brooklyn and works directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. So you get their amazing array of products at a reasonable price. Brooklyn and has something for your every comfort need, ideal for a seasonal refresh because they're launching new products, colors, and patterns all the time. It's true. We have multiple because we really love them a lot. Two sets. Two sets. I'm talking buttery soft, breathable sheets, plush, absorbent towels, cozy robes, and I, honestly, a little disappointed in us that we have not partaken so in these get those robes. robes. Like, how do we not have these robes yet? The sheets uh, the cozy are robes great. and comfy loungewear you'll want to put on and never take off. They're so confident in their core products that they come with the 365 day warranty. They've received over 75,000 five star reviews, kind of like us. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but they don't write We're songs for their neck to neck. We're almost there. Yeah. <laughs> and their customer service. <laughs> Clearly, they get their eight hours every night because they're a dream to work with if you ever have an issue. We <laughs> love our sheets for real. Like, I couldn't be happier with our sheets. And I wouldn't just say that because they're paying us to. I would say that regardless if they were yeah. paying us or not. Like we genuinely would recommend these sheets to anybody. We Most love days them. I'm just out on the sidewalk recommending it to anyone who walks by. <laughs> yeah, as if you go out on the sidewalk talking to strangers. We don't have sidewalks. We don't. <laughs> What's that about? Anyway, uh, give yourself the comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at Brooklinen. Give yourself the comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at Brooklinen. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code RELAX to get 20% off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's that's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N dot com and enter promo code RELAX for $20 off with a premium purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com promo code RELAX. I need to relax today. I feel a little loopy, y'all. I feel out of it. Maybe I'm nervous because I know we're about to watch. Oh, maybe, it yeah. Us back off. Yeah, this is something that you wouldn't do for a long time. No. And then I was like, we should do this for the podcast. And you, I said, were, no. you said no. I said no. And, and now I'm like, well, I guess we're doing it. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to do it. So how this works, if you've um, ever done this with us before, uh, we put it on Netflix. So pull up your Netflix, guys. And you're going to watch it. We're watching it on mute. And we're going to talk over it. We're going to have like some commentary over it with some behind the scenes info and fun facts and whatnot as we watch. I will try my hardest to remember to tell you guys to pause when you need to pause and play when you need to play and all of that jazz so that we're um, around the same time code the entire time. But uh, if y'all are queued up, I think it's time for us to go ahead and, and watch a little bit of Haters Back Off. So... I didn't tell them to play love. Oh. You can't go ahead and push it. It's part of the rules. Right, well, so Eric push went it. ahead and push play. I mean, we all was, weren't thought, ready for it. I just it. thought you would wrap up seeing that. Okay, now. Okay, anyway, we're going to watch it. So episode three, Haters Back Off. Uh, go, push play. We're starting off with Miranda. Um, this is based on an actual YouTube video. I was going to ask, yeah. So this is, we tried our hardest to recreate as many YouTube videos as we could. And this video. I love how every episode starts with like essentially that. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's so great. So Miranda's doing this video. And this is, even they try to make a replica of my uh, house that I lived in at the time when I filmed this video I did respect by Aretha Franklin and um, when fun fact about the actual video of recording this I recorded this when I was living with my roommate Heather in college and she was dating John who's another one of my best friends still and he is now an out homosexual but at the time he was a closeted homosexual dating her and they were in her bed we had a bunk bed um, they when were, you filmed that video? I, they were cuddling on her bed, trying not to laugh, as I was making that video. Oh, that's so funny. Isn't that random? So, yeah. <laughs> and random. Uh, we got Emily watching this video. Oh my gosh, I don't remember mm -hmm. like any of this. So uh, a lot of things that we did 
when creating this show was is like this, wait so is it sorry to, uh, so yeah. i'm gonna pause it right here oh we're pausing Uncle jim is putting uh, a lipstick on miranda is that the origin of the lipstick that's yes. the first time we see miranda in red lipstick right no well she was in it for the first episode wow. and the second one yeah no okay. but it does well, that was, what i was about to say was that we um tried to like show where everything came from with her right. so like her hiding in the closet we explain in season two like why she's always in the closet when she's scared or sad you know like mm -hmm. Because those these are questions that the writers would ask me in the writers' room. Like, why does Miranda wear the lipstick? Why does Miranda wear these types of clothes? Why does Miranda like this type of food? Why does Miranda go in the closet for these types of videos? Like, they would ask me these questions, and I would have answers. The real answers, like, well, I just wanted to find something ugly to wear, and so I wore like John's big T-shirt or my dad's old shirt or this is a shirt I used to wear when I was homeschooled or whatever. And then sometimes we'd be like, let's come up with a creative reason why, and. So for the lipstick, we decided Uncle Jim was the one who was like, hey, encouraging, it. encouraging extra because they're trying to like further her career and they know that models would this like is how the models overdraw do their lip line to make their lips look bigger. And oh. so that's what they would do. I love that that's, I just love to me like that that's, this is Uncle Jim's influence. Mm -hmm. And yes, he's, of course. he's applying the lipstick. I right. love that moment. And in the background God, here, we're paused on a frame of Emily um, All the and hats. the hats behind her, half of those hats are from my, I've like, I've seen them I, around our house. Still. Yeah. I brought a lot. I brought suitcases of Miranda props up to Canada with me for them to scatter in her room because I wanted little Easter eggs for like the longtime viewers and fans of Miranda to find in the background of the so show. So props, so props and set tech didn't recreate these things. These are no, suitcases oh, full of like. Props oh, that you they viewed did. for years. Oh, some of it they did. Most of it, they recreated stuff that blew my mind. Because yeah. we would send them pictures of my childhood home and all of a sudden on set would be like yeah. a small cast of like a baby hand because they saw it in the background of a picture that I sent them. Like props department was outstanding but I still I wanted things that I knew my fans knew from other videos so there's like the Christmas tree hat in the background the like Michael Jackson hat up on the top that's what's so cool about this business is that like there's so many different departments but like everybody is just as passionate about like the fine little details mm -hmm. so like you as a performer like about your performance but like for someone that's making props like they want it yeah that's mm -hmm. I just think that's so cool about and in that the first industry. Miranda video on the wall in the background, you see like kind of collagey, homemade looking like little papers with pictures on them. And those were collages that Heather and I had made of each other, but they're so blurry in the Miranda video, you don't know what they are. So they recreated the look of those, but made them all pictures of Miranda and cats, whatever. They did a great job. Anyway, yeah, well done. we're pushing play now on Emily talking to Miranda about why she's back on the internet and Miranda's saying that you know she's back on the internet she's she's got to be there for her fans and Emily wants her to go see her back grandma off. oh wait no well she wants her to get off um the internet but she wants her to go sing oh, Danny Boy see, to I, Auntie it's been Moira so long I, I, I didn't I don't remember what happened here yeah yeah so Emily is like coming to her saying like hey Go, go sing to Auntie Moira and she's, Miranda thinks she's dead and Uncle Jim thinks she's dead. This was a lot of improv in this scene, it was really fun. I have not seen, <laughs> Uncle Jim said, are you sure she's not dead? Because <laughs> it's a good opportunity to perform, right? They're, at this point, they're looking for, well, like, they are, but for stage time and they're like, a, um, a funeral would be good stage time. Right, but mm -hmm. Emily, well, no, 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 there's no one dead yet. But Emily is saying like, um, she's dying. Do you not remember? You really don't remember. You just made up I a plot point you, that doesn't exist. I remember you singing at a funeral is what I remember. That does happen, but it's yeah. not Auntie Moira's funeral. Oh, okay. Um, Someone dies. <laughs> Eric wasn't in this episode much, so he didn't read it and he didn't watch it. I only read, <laughs> first rule as an actor, you only read your lines. Yes. One of the writers on this show, when we were writing the show, he would say, this is how actors read scripts. Not my bullshit, line, not my bullshit, 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 bullshit my, my line. line. Bullshit, 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 <laughs> my line. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, so I just said a lot of bad words, but that's what I was quoting someone else. Anyway, so uh, Emily, they have this auntie with Alzheimer's and dementia and they and they want her to her memory to be sparked. And Emily's trying everything she can. And she knows that Miranda used to sing Danny Boy to her. So she's saying, go sing Danny Boy to Auntie oh, Moira. Yeah. And Miranda's like, what? No, she's dead. And then Uncle Jim and Miranda were like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we have to go sing to her. It's a good opportunity because they find out that at the old folks home, there's like this producer. That's what happens in this episode. So they think it's a good opportunity. Right. So anyway, um, here's Patrick. We're on Patrick's um, outside. I wonder if this was our first day of shooting too, because we yeah, did so much. Yeah, Because mm -hmm. this is episode three. Beautiful so. day. Didn't actually rain. That's them. They had sprayed 
the driveway with a hose because everything looks better on camera when it's wet. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick is very upset because Miranda, he saw Miranda in the with last Owen, episode yeah. leave with Owen. So he's very pouty. And <laughs> I, I forgot about that. <laughs> but Miranda's like, you're, Patrick's charging Miranda in this scene. And Miranda's like, you're charging me. And then Patrick begrudgingly hands her 50 cents. <laughs> like he always pays her. To, yeah. Miranda gets her, her popsicles for free. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't remember the scene, but I remember like this was this was one of those scenes where the uh, still photographer was on set that day. So really? I've seen oh, like, yeah. I've seen this like is all pictures, the pictures we have. Like all the pictures we have are from the scene. Well, this episode is the rain episode. So like the, our first scene that we shot was in this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so Miranda's pissed off at you and goes back in the house. Poor little Patrick. Uh, we're in the the grocery store scene with Angela Kinsey. And um, Mr. Keith walks in, our wonderful Keith, who... Um, Great character. This is the first day we shot. This is one of the first scenes we shot of the whole season. Oh, yeah. Season. The, the first day ever of shooting was all the grocery mm-hmm. store stuff, huh? Yeah. And I was so excited and so <clears throat> nervous and having so much fun. It was so wild to be there. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know that I have much to say about this, except I this grocery store had a very, very specific smell. It was a real grocery store. Yeah. And like an independent grocery store, mm-hmm. so like a smaller one. And uh, I think those all have an I- identifiable yes. open cooler. You yes. know what I mean? Just like meat open half refrigerated yes also the air you're breathing it's like, like you can kind smell of that you can smell the temperature. And then all the vegetables like the produce had like the that kind of um, slotted clear plastic mm-hmm. hang down thing. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that has a scent. It, it's so specific that if I ever, I couldn't explain it really to you, but if I ever smelled it again, my, I would be smacked back to this day. Like so specifically this day, like, because even in season two, when we went and shot at this grocery store again, all I could think about was this day. It was such a monumental day in my life because it was the first was day the on first set. Day, yeah. Because I don't I believe anything's going to happen until it actually happens in this industry. And so even though they had picked up the show, we'd written the show, we'd cast the show, I had moved to Canada. I was like, it's not going to happen. Right, yeah. And so then when we were there and I saw the cameras and we were literally filming it, I was like, wait, is this happening? Like it had yeah. been years in the works. Yeah. Years of... Uh, pitching and writing and casting and all this stuff and and then when it was finally happening I, I was felt like, that way as an actor too. crazy it's like, it's, oh I got it I didn't get it until it's, yeah yeah until it's in the um, can by the way oh I'm pausing because the the intro to the show just happened like the haters back off uh came on the screen of like the the artwork I'm pausing it there you guys I saw on TikTok remember when we were talking about how they were selling the haters back off stuff. Yeah, we couldn't figure out who it was. We could we couldn't figure out who was selling it, but the girl who bought it, she bought it and she won the raffle thing. She posted about it on TikTok, uh-huh. and I saw it. It came up on my for you page, and I commented and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you! Like, let me know if I can buy any of this from you." And she messaged me. Oh, that's so and I cool. haven't messaged her back yet, but I need to message her and be like, obviously she can keep whatever she wants. Like, it was so she made like three TikToks, and they were all like promoting the show and promoting it and just she was like I love this piece and she appreciated it all so much she was like I love this one so much look this one got damaged like she puts pulls each thing it's so oh, that's sweet so cool. actually you know I'm gonna I need to look her up because I want to like promote her so you guys can go I, I check sh- it out if you want to I, I want to mention for anyone listening or watching this that like half of our garage is just boxes of mm-hmm. props and and costumes from haters back off that you have sentimentally kept and and Mm -hmm. are holding on to. It's the only thing I I, um, hoard. Yeah. It's the only thing I hoard. Yeah, it would, I guess, be a boring episode of Hoarders, but like the person would be like, you got to let some of this go. What are you going to do with these boxes of random fabric? Okay, so and, uh, this girl, taco costumes. <laughs> no, with two of them. So her, um, her name. She only has the videos of her unboxing. There's three parts, and it's watermelon dot stitches. And there's three videos of her unboxing all the artwork. And I just thought that was so cool. And she messaged me and said she'll send me any of the artwork. So I need to write her back and 
um, and send her a bunch of stuff and say thank you. And like, and I'm not, I'm obviously want her to keep anything she wants because she clearly like appreciates it so much. And that's all I wanted was for someone to get it who well, would appreciate yeah, and she, it. And she, it seems like she bought it. Well, yeah, well, I don't know if someone would buy it and sell it or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, but I oh, just right, made yeah. me happy that like someone who yeah. seemed really sweet and appreciated it, got it. And like, I just, I don't know, made my heart feel so happy because we were talking about that. And that was even the person who needed to relax that week for me. I was like, whoever's selling this stuff needs to relax. Oh. And now I'm like so happy that like someone Someone's wonderful got it. Got it, I, yeah. it made me so happy. So anyway, um, we're going back to the episode just for a minute. Um, here we go. We're right after the intro of the show and we're in the old folks home and we're pushing play now. So all these extras were great and we just put them all in chairs and we're like, don't move. We wanted it to look so bland and like plain in this, um, old folks home. And this woman, um, was really, really wonderful. The woman at the front desk, I thought she was super yeah, funny great. and she's, she was really sweet, wonderful to work with. Um, but yeah, this, this is a really fun scene. I can't believe, I forgot all about this like episode kind of like, I feel like I don't yeah, even remember it. Me too. I will say the woman who played Auntie Moira, I will remember more stories as we go, but like was a hoot, like, hel- like had me character, crying, right? yeah, I remember you stitches telling me about that. laughing. Um, so at this point in the episode, Uncle Jim sees this like famous old movie producer um, and he can't believe this Bob Hamburg, this famous movie director or producer was like, is now in this, is old, now folks in this old folks home. And, and so what Miranda and uncle Jim thought was going to be a waste of their time, Miranda going there and singing. Now they're realizing is a great opportunity. So, um, Miranda and Emily are here <laughs> talking <face>. to, <laughs> are here talking to auntie Moira and, she was so I can't even express how wonderful she was. I have hilarious pictures with her and she, I'm pretty sure she was British. Like, um, and she was just so funny and like the, that makes sense. She's in British Columbia. Dirtiest mouth love. Like every word she said was a bad oh, word, okay. a cuss word, so a grotesque just, like word. Like her mouth was actually dirty. Maybe, no. but I don't know if she brushes her teeth. I don't know anything about her gentle hygiene, uh-huh. but I do know. Her gentle hygiene. Her, oh, but did I say gentle? Yeah, I oh, like that though. God, I'm a mess Let's today. Let's call it gentle hygiene Dental hygiene is what I meant. <laughs> but she was really, really hilarious. And Francesca and I were just like dying of laughter the whole time we were there. And we shot all this. This was like a half day. Um, like we shot half the day at one location and mm-hmm. then the second half of the day we shot here and it was like everything was rushed and it was the second half of the day and we were there so freaking late. It was very hectic. Um, I just remember it being like really rushed and, and hectic, but, uh, sh- this whole anti Moira stuff, we, it, we, we had, we had good spirits because of how hilarious she was, even though it was late at night. So, um, I wish we could listen to it because I would, you know, I hate that we're just watching with the sound off because, I just know that like the writing of Uncle Jim in this scene is like so in this episode is so funny and his improv he did was so funny um, that he's just so excited about this like old man who's mm-hmm. like just losing his mind. I love hearing bit. like what was improv and stuff if you remember. Um, all of this pretty much was improv here where I'm like I'm saying it's a pleasure to meet you Mr. Hamburg and I'm like about to audition essentially for him and is this everything when you do all the faces and they're all the same yes. that's one of my favorite moments in the whole series oh thank you i think it's so funny yeah i think a lot of this was improv i can't even remember what was improv and what was not because a lot of times how we wrote the scripts were um you know a writer we'd all write it like the outline or ever then one writer would take it and write the script and then bring it back and we'd all like you know open it all up and redo it all and then put it all back together. But anyway, the point is that how we, the last step of writing the script would be, I would say the lines out loud in the room. Like I'd be like, I don't think Miranda would say it that way. And they'd be like, how would you say it? And then I'd be like, Oh, hello, Mr. Rainbow. <laughs> and we'd have to figure out how to say the, like how to write out the lines yeah. that Miranda would say. Cause that was, um, a big note from the network. Um, we're going to pause it here right as Patrick comes into the choir room with Owen. But oh, I forgot about this. This scene. was a that was a what I was talking about was a big issue with the network is they would be like, we don't get this scene between Patrick and Miranda. Like nothing happens here. Or like, why does Miranda um, only say oh here or whatever? And we um, we would have to have meetings with Netflix where I'd be like, well, I'd actually be going like this. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like, but how do you write it out in the script that you want it to sound like that? It's right. like I'd have yeah. to like show them, and they'd be like. 
oh, okay, 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 okay. So I'd be, really? Yeah, so it'd be like, aren't you me? You know, like I'd have so to. So for s- network notes, you'd have like a conference call and it would be you doing that. Yeah, we'd the get time. the, yeah, we'd always get the notes and then we'd have a conference call about it. And a lot of the conference calls r- ha- involved me do, performing, performing lines for right. them. So I'd be like, oh, now we get what you're trying to do here. Yeah. Um, or it would be them saying like, this is so outrageous. This would never happen to a person. And I'd have to explain like, this well, has happened it actually to you. happened to me, so it's yeah. not outrageous. And one of our amazing producers would be like, you have to have disclaimers at the beginning of these episodes. Like, this is based on true events. Because yeah. no, everyone's going to watch these and be like, this is so ridiculous. This would never happen to a person. And he's like, I, I cannot believe this happened to you. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to pause for a second because I want to take a moment to say thank you to our next ad, ad, ad. It's an ad. It's time for an ad. Like that song? That was very good. Yeah. I, I didn't even I get to the song about the ad it. yet. I was about to start chiming in. Let's hear it. Let's shake it at the time. Ad, ad, ad. It's time for an ad. Okay, you did not jump in. Uh, you totally left me hanging there. I'm, well, so I'm just going to do the ad okay. with sans you, okay? Which is fine. I because like, Thanks for saying sans, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. Bring it back. Um, but it's, uh, it's fine that you don't help me with this one because it's all about something that you don't have, which is bras, love. But I'm a fan. You're a fan of bras? Okay, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a fan of bras, particularly the one that I am currently wearing, which is super cozy and wonderful. Um, I love my new bras. I've talked about them so much before on here. Uh, they've changed the game for me. And that is my third love bra uh, or bras. I have multiple. They're designed for your perfect fit. Third love uses the measurements of millions of women to design bras with all day comfort and support. They stand behind their products. And if you don't love it, exchanges and returns are free for 60 days, which is amazing. There are more than 80 sizes. Every third love bra is made with signature memory foam cups, no slip straps, and a scratch-free band. Um, What I love about it is this fitting room quiz that you take. And I hated going bra shopping in the past to the point where I would just order random bras online and hope they fit me, which they never did. And third love has this awesome fitting room quiz that you can take that finds the perfect bra for your shape, your size, everything that you need. It finds it is so wonderful to ensure that you have the best fitting, most comfortable bra. It's really, really awesome. Throughout the whole thing, their stylists are available for one-on-one chats to answer any questions. It's better than a traditional bra fitting experience because like I said, this one, you can do it from the comfort and convenience of your own home. You don't have to have that awkward conversation with some random employee that you don't maybe trust, even though they could probably be really wonderful people. You don't know them. You don't want a rando like measuring your chesticle areas. You know what I'm saying? They have helped over 18 million women find their true bra size and you could be next. These bras focus on comfort and quality. It's time to break up with your bad bra and fall in love with better bras and underwear. Your boobs deserve it. Third Love is changing the game when it comes to comfort and style for all of your everyday essentials from loungewear and wireless styles to their number one rated 24 seven classic t-shirt bra. That's the one I'm currently wearing. It's everything they're creating the ultimate shopping experience their love knows your one true fit is out there so right now they're offering my listeners 20 percent off your first order go to thirdlove.com slash relax now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20 percent off your first purchase guys hello that's thirdlove.com slash relax for 20 percent off today go check it out and give your boobies the hug they deserve <laughs> All righty, guys, let's continue on with this episode. We're right at the beginning of the scene where Patrick comes in to talk to Owen. I'm pushing play now. Now, um, this was one of your audition scenes, wasn't it? Uh-huh, it was. And it was also Owen's audition scene. Did he play guitar in the audition? Can you tell no, me a little bit about, about that? No, we talked about this last epi- with the episode with uh, Chris oh, okay, when Chris right. was here, but he, oh, okay. he did play harmonica <laughs> for his audition. And he wore... Um, Either was it that blouse, the one he's wearing? He wore we like thought a blouse. It was so type. funny. It could have been. I think that is it. That's like the blouse he wore. And oh, he that told necklace. me. He told me that he wore this shirt at this like retreat he went to and somewhere. And I thought you were going to say Renaissance Fair. No, it essentially, I mean, I've already explained the story to the podcast, but like it was a cult essentially he was a part of. <laughs> and I was like, Dylan, you were in a cult. And he's like, oh yeah, I guess it was. Let me, I, let he's me say, so yeah. funny. I'll say this about, so this is Dylan Playfair is mm-hmm. the actor and he's great. He's a Canadian actor. Um, he's actually one of the main uh, 
actors in a show called Letter Kenny. That's one of my brother who edits this podcast. It's one of his favorite shows. He's also in some like kid show or movies series like Div- the Divergence or something. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. I, and I also I just I just looked. He's going to be in the new. Um, Mighty Ducks Disney really? Plus series is something. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Good for uh, him. But he's he's very talented. He's and super total, talented. And very nice and a good, so nice. good character. Oh my gosh. I, I really loved working with him. He was really awesome. He was yeah. perfect for this part. Good attitude on set. Like wonderful spirit. Like he was just lovely guy. Yeah. He was I, really I also wonderful. loved this scene because like Patrick's like a little bit into it when like, <laughs> I know it's his song and everything I think this is a, a wonderful scene because you really get to see how much like Patrick is like so in love with Miranda that he's just like if this guy's what's going to make her happy okay like I just need to go talk to him and let him know not <laughs> <Sussed>. to <laughs> I, I find you relaxing moment there I, I, I just thought that was great writing so um we're now in the scene where Miranda and Uncle Jim are sneaking back into the old folks home and reading this in the script, I was like, what? They're going to light stuff on fire? Amazing. Well, this scene, we improved so much. And this, there was actually a lot more to this scene that got cut where we were talking about, I don't even know what, but it was, I couldn't stop laughing. I was here. just going to say, you're just, you're just trying not to laugh. Well, because it's, the it's concept Steve Little, of like, comedic genius this sometimes whole time. I would be taken out of it. And like, all I could think about was the concept of what I was doing as opposed to like being in it. I'm Miranda in this moment. Sometimes I would be watching it as a producer, as a writer, as opposed to being in it as Miranda, which was a big mistake on my part. I can't imagine that must be so difficult because you've, you've written it, you're producing it, you've created the show, but you also have to perform in it. Like it's for many hats. But it was, it was hard because I would be watching it, like trying to watch it in my head. You'd as be like, editing it almost editing it. in your head. But because of that, I would laugh at it. I'd be like, this is so ridiculous. They're sneaking into the old folks home and like trying to set this trash can on fire. <laughs> and like the things that Steve would say, I would be listening and hearing him as like an editor or as a writer, as opposed to like being Miranda in the scene yeah. which was so unprofessional of me but like I couldn't help it because like my mind is trying to do all these well, things at once we are human beings and you only have the one brain and so to be like it, yeah it seems it like was, it, it, but yeah, it'd I be pulling in a lot of directions I was laughing a lot in that scene um, so we've got the Emily's getting a snack out of the fridge and she sees a five phase plan I love these five phase plans the, <laughs> everything is a five phase plan well and that came from the fact that Miranda always goes I'm a singer dancer model magic magician like she oh, lists her five talents that. so she lists her five talents when we were talking about the series we we're like let's explain those five talents and where they came from so in the first episode you see she's going to be a model magician actor she goes through all five Uncle Jim this is the plan to get you famous we're going to we have some of those in our garage we have too, a lot of, them. of those five phase we have plans. a lot of I them, framed yeah. one of them and um anyway so yeah that's where the five phase plan came from Miranda's this list. is honestly one of my favorite moments of the whole entire series is her, she, Miranda showing her range of emotion and there, it's you resetting to the exact same <laughs> face every time yeah it was fun the I guy who that. played Mr. Hamburg was so sweet um he just had to sit there and like eat pudding or whatever he's doing oh, as I wish we had that movie poster that's cool fleas whatever yeah, that is yeah again these all the movie posters were made by the by so the that's arts not department. an actual movie. No, wow, it looks they great. They made them all up, and and if I you wish look I could closely, buy that and post about it on TikTok. If you look that's closely, cool. like I kind of want to pause on it. Hold on, I'm going to. So if you pa- I've paused as Miranda singing, "Hey, I should put her in my movie," like that part. If I'm paused so you can see the poster. If you look, it's he's the obvious director, Bob Hamburg, but then that's Ariel. Ariel was our line producer. Um, Dave, like these are all people. Andrew Gaynor is the director of of this episode. Oh yeah. Georgia McCreary is our showrunner and one of our writers. Writers, Perry Rains, the other showrunner and oh, writer. That's so, so what a cool little Easter egg. So yeah, there. if you look at the posters, they all have everyone's People name involved. from production, like on the actual um, posters and whatnot. Because we I love have, those little things, those little tidbits. By the way, these are all things that would be emails that clogged up our email. Like we need names for the fleas poster, and we'd have to write them back and be like, okay, uh, George McCreary, Perry Rains. Like these are the emails we got all day about uh, every detail of the show. How many show. hours a night would you say you slept while shooting this Probably show? Probably three, two or three. Because and then and we shot long. We went over every every day. We at shot fourteen haters. hours. Yeah, we, like easy. It, it wasn't like we we would do twelve hour days. It was like fourteen to sixteen hour mm-hmm. days. Well, season two we couldn't go past fourteen legally. They were like, you're gonna kill people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we yeah, but it was very long days. And then usually after I would be writing, rewriting, yeah. and um, yeah. So and on the weekends we'd rewrite or be in the editing room. Was it that, was very hectic. Was that fun. legally? Because I feel like there was something that happened with like a, a cast member of Riverdale. Mm-hmm. That I don't they know had, if it was Riverdale, but I think it was that they worked so many hours and then they got into a, a car accident driving yes. home after working mm-hmm. overtime and then like production like 
mm-hmm. made stricter rules on how long you could keep. Right. People. And so this is not the same for every um, network. I just know that for Netflix legally, by the time season two came around, you could not go over 14 hours. Um, uh, 12 hours was like what we always aimed for because once you get past the 12 hour mark, it gets really expensive to pay everyone because overtime got even more expensive too to try to prevent people from going over. Um, But yeah, 14 hours was like literally, if you go past that, you're you're shut, like they shut down the production. You are not allowed to finish the show. And is that from like, uh, crew call or is that cause crew, I, crew call. Yeah. Cause, and, and so just so you know, if you're listening and, and you don't know this, like actors, a lot of time we have to be in an hour or two before for like hair and makeup and everything. So like the crew calls always before actors for, for, uh, for our production, it was, so our production was all the crew call was earlier than the actors got there. It was like the first per- it was 14 hours. I'm telling you for, for this production, I know for a fact okay. it was 14 hours from the first person who got there. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. So like it wasn't 14 hours from when the actors got there. It was 14 hours from when the first person got to set. Yeah. Cause a lot, cause a lot of jobs, like you're, you're there an hour or two before the crew even arrives mm-hmm. to, to go Hair through the, go through the works and then you're there for that 14 hour day. Mm-hmm. And it's the, I was always there for crew call, honey. Hey, you want to turn this podcast into just me complaining? Like, we can do <laughs> oh, it. <laughs> well, pick a topic. <laughs> All right, we're pushing play now as Miranda performs for Bob Hamburg here. Um, she is, <laughs> I love that so much. Okay, Uncle Jim pretends to play the piano as she <laughs> sings. Is so funny to me. Like, his Was that hectic. In the no, it's just yeah. him being like so hectic with his fingers. It's so funny. Um, I remember a lot <laughs> He's of her dis- biggest fan. Yes. Besides Uncle Patrick. Jim is, sh- I think Jim's a way bigger fan than Patrick. Mm-hmm. Way bigger. I don't know about that. Yeah. I think, well, I think Patrick's. They both really believe in her. Yes. Like they both mm-hmm. fully and committedly like. Yeah. Believe in her talent. So, um, Mr. Hamburg passes away here. And um, I love that Emily just like touches his neck and she's like, he's dead. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So Mr. Hamburg passes away. And I talked about this a little bit in another episode, but like there are no bad ideas in the writer's room for us. And so um, I had to learn that because one of the writers suggested one of our first meetings, like what if Miranda kills someone? And I was like, what is this writer's room? This is, you know, I've Mm -hmm. told the story before, but like, since there are no bad ideas, you kind of go off of everything. And we, I was like, there's no way this happens. Like there's no way that she kills someone. Is that what you think happened? Is her singing killed him? Um, well, what I thought he was, he didn't pitch this storyline. He just pitched, what if Miranda Uh killed someone? And we had to go with that. And I was like, Oh, where, how, and why would this happen? And I think at that point we'd come up with the idea of her performing at um, the old folks' home. We'd come up with a bunch of different ideas, a bingo hall, a sizzler, an old folks' home. Like, where would Miranda perform? Where would she perform before she was famous? And we're yeah. like, what about, old folks' home was one of them. This is the shot I was telling you about last night. Okay, I'm pausing on the rain scene with um, Patrick and Miranda. Remember last night I was talking about this scene. We were oh, watching where- Naked and Afraid and there was this random shot that looks like it wasn't shot in the jungle they were at. It looked like it was shot in someone's it was added backyard. In post, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, we did that. I bet someone added that in post. I bet while they were editing the show, they were like, oh shoot, we need a shot of some bushes. Can Just you Just a transition? Why, what, what, what even yeah, so was we that? Yeah, so we needed a transition so- shot, but between when Miranda is leaving the old folks home into us outside, um, so there's, there's, Miranda's leaving the old folks home, that, scene, that shot right there. What is it? It's a lawn chair and it's raining on it. Oh, so, I can't even make out what that image is. I can. It's the it's the now hand I, of yeah, it's the I hand can. of the I chair. Guess we are watching so it on basically, iPad. we as we were editing it, we were like, this is such an abrupt transition to go from Miranda's leaving the old folks home crying so with little Jim to all of a sudden standing. they're in the pouring rain with Patrick and Miranda. It was so jarring. We needed some sort of B-roll shot in between to just establish that we're in a new place. This is a new situation, and so. Um, we were like, okay, can we get some B-roll? But at this point in Vancouver, it started raining because we're getting into like the fall. And so I was like, it's raining like on, on the next rainy day. Like, can someone please just go shoot in their backyard a shot 
of like rain on something, a lawn chair, a beach ball, just something random. I love that. Now, now I get, now that I get what it is, like I think that's a very pretty so shot. It's something you would never notice watching the show. You wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. You'd just be like, oh, here's the next scene. But be, it was so jarring without it. And then when we put it in, we're like, I guess that is a nicer transition. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so funny. We were talking about that shot yesterday. I didn't realize it was in this episode. But anyways, here we go. This is the... The very first scene mm-hmm. that I shot and you shot. As Miranda, yeah. And we shot together. Yep, so I'm pushing play at the beginning of the rain scene with Patrick and Miranda. There Iconic. Were no clouds in the sky, and we had to CGI them in. And poor, That's wild to me. This is like All, the, six in the morning. It was like a beautiful day, uh, clear clear sky, and that you, so they had rain towers in, which is fake rain, which was freezing cold. We started shooting like 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. And the water was like brown because they hadn't used the mm-hmm. the production rain towers in a while. Mm-hmm. Remember we were like brown? We yeah, were like it wet was really and brown. gross. Yeah, it was really bad. Um, so here I'm on the phone with uh, Ben Hamburg, or wait, what was it? Was it Ben Hamburg? Mr. Hamburg, what was his first name? I already forgot it. Bob. Bob Hamburg, thank you. Bob Hamburg's um, nephew has called me, has gotten Miranda's phone number, and has called me and is um, talking to me about performing at the funeral. Mm -hmm. And um, little do I know that it's Ben Stiller. Yeah. And he says, can I offer you any help in the industry? And it's Ben Stiller. When I saw this in the script, I was like, wait, what? (laughs) Ben Stiller is going to be in the show? Do you want to talk? And there he is. Do you want to talk about how you got... Um, yeah, a sure. True legend of, of comedy, like and and uh, to to be in haters back off here. Ben sure, Stiller. yeah. I mean, we knew we wanted it to be someone famous. Like we in the writers' room, as I would tell stories of like my career. Um, uh, I have to pause it. I'm so sorry, guys. We're on the scene of Emily in the garage painting. Um, we're never gonna get through this episode. But yeah, I. I would always tell stories of different people I'd performed with and worked with and my experiences with them. And I have some crazy stories, some I will never tell publicly. Um, but they, they were always so impressed that like these huge celebrities would know of Miranda before Miranda was like super big. And um, so they wanted someone to be there. Like what if like this huge celebrity is giving her an opportunity and she doesn't take it, Yeah, you know? And so originally it was gonna be Jerry Seinfeld. We wanted Jerry Seinfeld because I had done Comedians in Cars getting coffee with him. Mm-hmm. But I felt... I hate asking for favors. Like it is like, yeah, you don't. I will not ask anyone for favors in the industry. Like I never want anyone to feel like I'm taking advantage of them. I'm so appreciative of people who've given me a chance and have tried to help me that I'd like, I never want them to think I want anything from them other than like friendship. And, and I didn't, Jerry, I just felt so uncomfortable reaching out to Jerry and, and being like, will you do this scene in my show I just I'm sure he because, would have well especially because the advice he gave me years before when I did comedians in cars getting coffee was like he said what do you want to do next and I said I want to write a tv show I was writing haters at the time and he said why are you trying to do that we're all trying to do what you're doing mm-hmm. and he kind of wow. was like you're an idiot like you're do you I'm talking to you because I want to do what you're doing why do you want to do what I did way back in the day like right. do what you're doing like and to hear that from like the man with like the most successful television show in the world world I was like I can't now call him years later and be like hey remember when you told me not to do this I'm doing it and can you do me a favor and be in it and I didn't you know I hadn't talked I'm to sure, him I'm sure he would have but like on par I'm with sure him is Ben Stiller yeah. who you also had that oh my god Ben Stiller yeah equally as incredible amazing um so but Ben I felt a little more comfortable with because I um he had come to my shows he'd seen me live and his daughter was a big fan that's how he knew who I was same uh-huh. with Jerry um and so um, his daughter is so sweet and wonderful. And, and he and um, Christine Taylor and her and their kids, they come see my shows. And I met Ben Stiller backstage and it felt um, much more casual. Like Jerry was like, I knew him because we worked together and he was so sweet and wonderful and personable. But like, it just felt like a little bit of a different relationship. I had emailed with Ben Stiller a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he invited me to like the Zoolander premiere uh, Zoolander 2 premiere and like you know we we had exchanges back and forth so I felt a little bit more comfortable reaching out to him and so asking you, him so you personally did it not I like not Netflix it. or the show no like no or like they, agents they felt like it it's 
of co- that's of course the better way to do it. And they explain like, that's how you get these people to do these gigs. Like you don't have an agent, call an agent, call a producer, call an agent. Then it's not even going to get to him. Right. Cause uh, if, if like his oh, agents had been like, they want you to do a cameo in this new Netflix show about a YouTuber. Like, his agent would pass on that before it would get to before him. Before he would even have a chance to be like, and oh, so, wait, I know her. I'll right. do it. Yeah. And so I remember I was so nervous. I was so freaking nervous. I wrote this email. I could probably, should I find it? I think I'm going to find it and read it. <laughs> okay. Find it? I found the email I sent to Ben Stiller. <laughs> okay. So I said, I, re- I rem- I'm having anxiety looking at this because I remember how anxious it looks I long. was. Read it. I said, hi, Ben, Colleen Ballinger here. Hope you and your adorable family are doing well. Miss you guys. We are deep into production of my Netflix show, Haters Back Off, and there's an episode with a quick cameo that I had you in mind for to play yourself. I know it's a long shot, but I figured I'd ask anyway. It's a short phone call with Miranda, about a half page of dialogue, and we can accommodate to your schedule and location if you're interested. If you like, I can send you a script to look over. If not, no worries. Totally understand. Either way, (laughs) really. You're like, don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) Either way, I really look up to you, and I'm so appreciative of everything you and your family have done for me. Thanks for being so supportive of me it means more than you know give Ella a hug for me Colleen and then he wrote me back uh let me think dot 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 yes <laughs> <laughs> and then we wrote back and forth a bunch like talking about it and whatever but he was so sweet like and he wrote back almost immediately I remember being in the in the video village of haters back off like we were shooting something and I was dressed like Miranda and I was like I wish should I send it like mm. and I sent the email and he wrote back and I was with him I was like he said yes we were so excited we were, I think it was the first day of shooting or near the first day of shooting or Something I don't remember because we only recorded my side of the footage, obviously. But in it the said Ben Stiller in the script. Yes, of course. So it you did. were like hopeful. Well, we had talked about who we wanted it to be, and at first we discussed Jerry Seinfeld, and I was like, I don't think I'm comfortable asking him. And then they said Ben Stiller, and then I was like, oh, maybe, you know. So, um, well, Jerry Seinfeld, he listens to this podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Might get an um, angry review. No, uh, yeah, no. Um, and no, he, I think Jerry is amazing. Like, I, I think he's the They're most both on wonderful. Par and, and, I'm and both great. so but yeah, appreciative it was, of for, for me, them. I was like, I was, I'm, I'm kind of doing a scene with Ben Stiller. This yeah. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and that scene, the rain scene, was the first scene I ever shot. And if you look closely, you can see my mouth quivering while I'm on the phone because I was so nervous that my face was shaking. I was nervous too, but I was also mostly cold from that mm-hmm. brown, cold, fake rain. Um, yeah. And I remember it was the very first thing we shot and it was very early. And then it just immediately, just soaking wet and cold, 7 a.m. in northern Vancouver. And uh, yeah, I remember like, like improving something at the end of the scene, like wrong number or something, like mm-hmm. something, oh, something yeah. dumb, like just, but just like kind of getting the vibe of you and oh, working yeah. with you and like, and like playing with you. And if that was like, okay. Mm-hmm. And like what the whole vibe of the show was. And then the next thing we shot was me riding up the, in, on the bicycle the first time to Miranda's house and talking with the director, like, and, and still trying to figure out like who, who is this guy? So it's interesting to see this scene in episode three knowing that that was the first thing I shot and I still didn't really know like who Patrick was mm-hmm. that, you know what I mean? Like, and how it, how it would work. I yeah. think one of my favorite lines from this episode is how that scene starts, which is like you and me in silence in the rain and you're covering up Miranda with your umbrella and you're soaking wet as I'm eating a popsicle in the rain. And the it's first so line weird. is, I, love it. I picked a scamp today or something <laughs> yeah. like that. It didn't even, it came off in one piece or something like that. Like I'm like, I picked a scamp today. Um, and didn't even bleed. That's why I said, pick a scam day and didn't even bleed. And you'll love when that happens. And that's <laughs> yeah. the whole conversation. Like, right. um, I love that. Anyway, um, I do want to take a second and say thank you to our next incredible sponsor. It's who's that? Audible love. Audible is so amazing, guys. We love Audible. Um, it is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more. As an Audible member, you will get one credit every month good for any title in their entire premium selection. You'll also get full access to their popular Plus catalog. It's filled with thousands and thousands and thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, guided fitness, meditation, sleep tracks. I mean, they have everything, guys. It's not just books. It's really awesome. 
And by the way, this is like such a game changer now that like I'm a mom, like I've always used it like randomly on planes and cars and whatnot, but um, it's such a game changer now. Like we're so busy that to be able to have it playing in the background as we're like, you know, tidying up the house or sometimes I'll have it on as I'm editing something that doesn't require audio. I know that sounds strange, but I do that a lot. I like mm-hmm. to have something else playing in the background. And um, yeah, it's really wonderful. Strongly recommend if you have a busy lifestyle and can't sit down with a physical book. You can download the app and it is free. And with an Audible membership, you can download titles and listen offline anytime, anywhere. Um, Eric, mm-hmm. I've heard you listening to a little something something recently. Yeah, I've been listening um, to the science fiction novel Dune by Frank Herbert. Is that what it is? Yeah. I was like, what is he listening to? At first I was like, is he listening to meditation? And then I was like, it's a book. I don't have to read. I can just listen to it. And it's kind of like acted and scored and it's great. Yeah. So they've made a a new version of a a film version of it that's coming out in October, I think, starring Mm -hmm. um, Timothy Chikuteri. Oh, charcuterie board. Charcuterie board and Oscar Isaac, and it's yeah, it looks looks and uh, there's a great director involved. It looks really good. So I've been. So you wanted to. So I wanted brush to brush up on the book first to read the book mm-hmm. before yeah before seeing the film. That's amazing. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah. Yeah, Eric was doing yoga the other day. I walked in. and I was like, well, who is who is he I'm listening just to? Listening to a science fiction novel while doing <laughs> yoga. This is the person that you have. I love that about you. That's what people ask what I love about you. It's that you listen to science fiction novels while doing (laughs) yoga. Uh, You guys, if you want to check it out, you can visit audible.com slash relax pod or text relax pod to 500 dash 500. That's audible.com. A U D I B L E dot com slash relax pod um, or text relax pod to 500 dash 500. Go check it out. You guys will not be disappointed and maybe you'll start doing yoga while you listen. Who knows? Get in that fitness. All right, moving on. We had paused it while we were in the garage. Emily is painting. This um, this garage is in exact replica of my childhood garage. I can attest to that because I have seen literal your parents exact garage. replica. Looks just like it. A little better now. And um, Emily is painting in the garage, and this is based on something my brother used to do to get away from the chaos. He wanted his own space, and so he found a little nook in the garage, like he cleared out a small little like four <laughs> foot by four foot space in the garage where he would go and make um, models like glued together like airplane models do you know what i'm talking about yeah well emily is based on your brother christopher right we talked about this oh, you did? in okay. the last episode way to listen to your own podcast by no, the way I, I, I know i know i know that you did i did listen to it i was just saying it again <laughs> it was a callback sure <laughs> um, anyway um a lot of a lot of the character traits were based on christopher but she's kind of based on like just people and any normal-ish human. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that was based on uh, my actual childhood garage and Christopher did go hide in the garage. So we're pushing play now, we're in the garage. Um, and I love any scene in this garage because I just, I mean, I, it makes me feel nostalgic to my own home and my own childhood. It's pretty great. And I love the, the concept of like her opening the yeah. clothes to like talk to people like it's a door. And I love that set. Miranda's holding um, a daddy saddle here. Oh, there's a scene that got cut right before this, by the way. So Miranda goes into the scene that was supposed to be right here. Why I'm chewing bubblegum still. And I have like popsicle on my face is because Miranda leaves the scene with Patrick and storms into Uncle um, Jim's bedroom. And we, there's a scene on his bed where we're like talking about how. Um, she's like, oh, I'm supposed to go perform. Like this stupid guy called me and wanted me to perform. It's so annoying. And Uncle Jim's like, you have to do it. Like, oh my gosh, this is this is a great opportunity for you. You have to do it. And then we came into the garage to talk to Emily. So there's a whole scene that got cut, oh. um, which is very sad. That high five after we closed the close there um, is very funny to me just because it's like the <laughs> lamest high five. Lame, lame high fives are. Lame high fives are great. Always funny. Uh, again, everything in this grocery store, we're in the grocery store scene now with Bethany and Keith, all the signs you see everywhere, the props department has to do mm-hmm. like props departments and set deck. They like, make a lot of signs. Well, they just do so much. So much that, like yeah, they you work don't so hard. Yeah. Like shout out to anyone who's ever done set deck or props for a television show. Like the amount of stuff they have to do. Endless. is wild like the amount of work they put into the shows they work on is so impressive and emails for approval i imagine that oh they must have God, to send everything yeah. like it is so 
intense. So like, and when I look at this scene, I just like, all I see is like all of the, all of the signage everywhere that they had to make. And then all of the, the products they had to put on the shelves. Angela's so good. Angela's amazing. Like Angela is, is really, really incredible. So it's Keith, Chaz. mm -hmm. We had a really hard time finding a Bethany and, um, when Angela came in and improv with me, we we're like, oh, well, that was easy. She's perfect. You know, it'd be interesting to hear, love, is like other people that auditioned for Bethany or that. Maybe um, almost happened. A lot of people auditioned, and there were a lot of great people. The, the problem with. Um, Joan Cusack, I feel like, is someone you told me once was like. Yeah, we talked to her for a while about uh -huh. doing it. Um, and uh, we talked to her people for a while about doing it. Um, Jane Lynch was someone else Jane we talked to a bunch else, about yeah. doing it. But the. the and they're great and we would have loved to have them, but like Angela is so exactly she was Bethany. Perfect, yeah. She's perfect. And, um, w honestly, like all the parts the the auditions were not about finding the best actor. It was about finding the person. Yeah. So it like anyone who, I mean, maybe that makes any actor out there feel better when they don't get parts, but like that, none yeah, of makes that, me feel better, yeah, yeah. none of that process was about like who was most talented. So like when you don't get a part, you shouldn't think, oh, it's cause I'm not talented. I mean, maybe that's true, but that's not what it was about. It was, we saw so many incredibly talented, amazing, perfect actors. And you go up, as mind. an actor, you go up, like sometimes you go to the audition uh, and you, you sign, you sign in, you know what I mean? And you see all the names there and you're like, oh, I'm auditioning against mm -hmm. very famous people. I'm not going to get to this. Right. But it wasn't about who was the most talented. It was about who was yeah, who, the cool essence of that person. Not all projects are like that. That's cool to hear. That. Yeah. So um, like Uncle Jim, we saw so many like big celebrities, like huge people. And they were so good. You can say I'm here. Come on. No, I'm not going to say I'm. Yeah. Um, but it was like Steve just emoted he had the energy of jim and angela had the energy of bethany she was she just gave the essence and patrick obviously eric was the first person who came in we're like oh that's patrick it's done even though we saw a lot of talented people um this scene was shot so fast um because we actually this scene was supposed to be right outside of um the funeral like you could see the man in the casket we're in the scene where miranda's practicing the song in the choir room and this scene we shot it outside of a door frame like where you could look in and see the man sitting in the casket still and she's rehearsing it and the director was like we're in the middle of shooting the scene and the director was like this isn't right this is not right. I need her to perform it. She needs to like be rehearsing it. And you can't hear because it's so obvious everyone at the funeral could yeah. hear her. We have to do this in a different location. So we actually shot. Oh, that happened on the fly like on that. On the fly. Wild. Yeah. And so we were about to wrap. We were running out of time. We couldn't get the scene how he wanted it. And so we ended up just shutting down for the day. And then he was like, we have to find another day. And we shot this at the end of the season, I feel. Um, like at the end of the shooting the season. Yeah, I remember it was like steady cam and it like moving all that stuff while she's performing. Mm -hmm. I remember, I feel like I was on set that day. And um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Like we had to shoot it really fast. We had like a small window of time to shoot it in that little choir room yeah. area. But it was not supposed to be there. It was supposed to be right outside the door of the funeral home. And we quickly realized this is not going to work. And there's actually B-roll. I think the only B-roll of me not uh, like right before action shot of me that's like every actor's worst nightmare where like you get caught on camera doing something or saying something you shouldn't and then that clip goes viral that was the, that that scene that we shot and got cut actually haunted me because it was the end of the day it wasn't going well everyone was frustrated i had an earwig in that wasn't working for the audio and an earwig I didn't is like a little like a flesh colored like kind of ear mm -hmm. bud that they stick deep in your ear that just sounds like insane static mm -hmm. slash what you're meant mm -hmm. to be hearing like they're always problematic they never really work right and um so i had a moment i don't think i said anything i think just on camera in the raw footage right before the yell action you see me going like <sighs> like sighing like rolling my eyes at the director at andrew which we laughed about andrew and i later he's like look you're like such a brat because <laughs> like it but it's the only time it got caught on camera like me because you know the, every actor has that fear that like you're accidentally gonna say or do something in you a act moment like of, a like, jerk and it's like someone catches it yeah. and like then like puts it and online and i was so yeah. mortified by that moment because i was like so frustrated and he was so frustrated that i didn't i just like sighed and it was like looked so bratty i think i have it somewhere i'll have to find it on my phone and show it to you love it's really funny so Miranda's making a speech at the funeral 
And oh my gosh, Steve Little talking to that man at the funeral, the like mm-hmm. guy who I was like the extra. It on the day, yeah. So we just put him next to a random man, and he ended up being like so heavily featured because when we were shooting Steve's coverage of this, he wasn't supposed to have any lines here. He just kept talking to. He him. just yeah. we we you know we got shots of like Patrick watching, Emily watching, Bethany watching, and Steve watching. And when we started shooting Steve, Uncle Jim watching Miranda, he was talking so much to the guy sitting next to him, and it was so funny <laughs> we had to cut a bunch of it out in the first cut we sent to netflix or like the episode is way too long and we had to cut a bunch of things that he had said to this guy and it was so painful because it was so funny um so here emily is about to like grace. stand up and sing amazing grace she's so francesca is one of the cutest people i like her face she just looks so adorable on camera i just love her look like she's so cute and so pretty i just i love her so much um so emily's kind of saving the day by singing in front of everyone Mm -hmm. to stop miranda from embarrassing herself i loved that in the scripts it came out really Um, well yeah it's i love their relationship is so great like the sister relationship the love hate like they're for each other but like also ruining yeah yeah you need like a you need like a a a straight man as it were in the series and it's it's kind of genius that it was the sister mm-hmm. of Miranda. So uh, Miranda is about to walk off the stage and slam the casket shut, right? Right here, I slam the casket shut. And there was one take. What was, what happened? There was a man in there and you he forgot. He was in it. So w- when you sh- oh when we shot it from God. behind, the shot that we used, I'm behind him and he's, so he's he was not, in, not in it. But there were a couple shots um, where it was, you, know, you could see him in it and he was alive. That was actually him, like laying in that casket all day long. And there was one time I got so into the scene, I went and I started to close it and I caught it last minute. And I was like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Because and I was like holding his hand. He they was had so propped sweet. Him up, they had propped him up so mm-hmm. he wasn't fully laying it. So if you I had slammed, slammed it, it on, right him, on his face it would have slammed and luckily onto him i caught it like luckily i started to slam it and everyone was like gasped and screamed yeah well because well, there's like 40 of us there sitting in the audience and oh everybody God, collectively gasped that you almost, i was so embarrassed actually, it was almost an actual funeral for that i know background actor um i love this line um where emily says uh, you are delusional. And she goes, really, Emily? Delusions aren't until phase five. Or magic's not till phase five, like about delusional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was Christopher's doing, his dumb puns and things. He is the pun man. Um, so every episode, we liked to bookend the episodes, if we could, with a... Started off with a... a uh, what looked like an original YouTube video. And, and, it, and this one ended with Miranda in the closet and we actually shot it way in post-production because this wasn't how the episode ended originally is this the first time we see this mm-hmm. the popsicle stick mountain it's the first time we see the popsicle that's stick the mountain. first time you see the, the, so we is took, that why he's been that, that that's why he's been saving them that's the first time that's revealed. yeah that's the first time that's revealed um so this scene in this closet this is not the closet on set they built this the same day they built the like intro wall the art wall um, so the day that we shot the intro, which was months after the show had wrapped, um, we also shot this scene because we rewrote the end of the episode. Cause once we edited the episode, we realized the ending wasn't quite right and we needed a different ending. Mm-hmm. And now I don't even remember what the original ending was, but it was not this. And so we shot this last minute like months after we'd wrapped and then just watching the video didn't really work. So then we wanted montage of everyone. So we had to go through footage of all the different episodes and find like you putting the popsicle stick on and like Emily walking up to Aunt Moira, like all these shots. Oh, that's how the episode originally ended. I remember, um, Emily goes up to Aunt Moira and like, she remembered, you know, she like put her head up. Um, but you took that out. No, it just, it's it didn't work. It just didn't work. Like it was like a weird ending and it wasn't clear what was going on or why it happened. And it was like, it, we just needed Miranda to learn a lesson. Like Miranda, yeah. we f- felt like Miranda had this like arc throughout the whole season, but she also needed an arc in each episode. And there, she didn't have a resolution for her in that episode. Like every episode we tried to make, give Miranda human like qualities as well. Like she's a brat, she's selfish, she's ignorant, she's stupid, but she's also a human. Like we wanted the audience to like care about her. And she seemed in this episode, I'm remembering now we watched it when we finished the third episode you, editing yeah, it, we were she's like, like, she's, there's nothing likable about her in this episode. About her, yeah. She's just an awful person in this episode. And so, um, 
we had her do the video at the end where she ends up singing Danny Boy um, for her Aunt Moira and doing the right thing because it just she was just too unlikable. And so um, we that's why we added that. I'm just now remembering. It's like all these memories are coming back now. Of like, so you never stop right when you're a writer. Not that I'm like, ah, I'm a writer, but like that's something I learned doing this is it's not you write a script and then you're done. You the writing process takes forever, but then you're still writing it when you're on the script you're, or when you're on set, you're rewriting all the scenes while you're on set. That's uh, sometimes though, like that's a luxury to have. Like you don't have that opportunity on every. Yeah. And then you're still one of the things that um Gigi, one of our showrunners would say all the time in the editor room, she's like, the final edit is in the final writer's room is in the editing room. Like yeah. you're still writing in the editing room. You're rewriting episodes with the edit and with the cuts. And a lot of shows, like when you do ADR, it's because they've, they want to not, they've, they're still rewriting we the did episode. And so they would add lines that would change moments and, and whatever that you would just mm-hmm. do, uh, we did that just season record two. the audio in after. Yeah. With you, there was a scene in season two where we made one of your lines be a completely different line and you had to match up my mouth, your mouth with your own, like the words in a recording booth, with, yeah. with your own mouth, but with different words. So we, what we did in the editing room was we watched your um, shots in silence and tried to figure out a way to make it look like you were saying something else. Then you, it was so complicated and we finally figured it out. Um, but yeah, that's, so we were, we finished the edit and then we still weren't done writing it. We were like, we finished the whole edit and then we had to go back into the writer's room and be like, how do we fix this? How do we make Miranda likable? What can we do? And we were so lucky that we had this um, part of the show where we made Miranda videos because they were low budget to film. So we didn't need to have a huge film crew there. We just needed the set of the closet and we needed the camcorder and we needed the crew for lighting and sound and whatever. So luckily we were able to add that final scene of Miranda singing that song. Um, because if we didn't have those like lame little videos that Miranda does, we wouldn't have been able to fix that episode. So the conceit uh, afforded the opportunity to, yeah, to do something creative like that. So we were really lucky with that, but that's, that's episode three. Yeah. I love that montage too, by the way, I was seeing the popsicle stick wall for the first time because like for me, like kind of, because that was in the first block because we shot the the first three episodes together like that was I was like oh I'm like I'm figuring out who this guy is and I really like him and that mm-hmm. he's that's why he's picking all these up I thought that was all really, the popsicle sticks up yeah. really great kind of character thing yeah that, that he was building that mountain yeah. that we have pieces for we do we have, we have pieces all those popsicle, the popsicle sticks, sticks in this house so cute I just love it um you know, I, uh, this has been really fun. It was fun to go over that episode. Cause I feel like that's one of the, that's like the one episode I have not really thought that much about since it came out. I, yeah, I haven't seen it, you know, cause years. I have like my favorites and I think that episode is really great, but like, I know episode one, like the back of my hand, I know yeah. the finale, like the back of my hand, there's like specific episodes, like the hospital episode in season two, like sticks out in my mind, but like, that's not one that sticks out in my mind, even though it's a really great episode. So I really haven't thought about it or watched it in so long. Um, but it was fun going down memory lane with you, love. Did you like it? Yeah, I kind of want to watch them and not talk and I know, hear them. I do too. I want to watch yeah. them and like be able to hear it and, and pay attention to it more. But it is fun to like have all these these memories and uh, and stories come yeah. flooding back. Yeah, it's That's why I love fun. these episodes. It's fun for me. Yeah, it's beautiful. What a great time in life What a that great was. time in life. It was a beautiful time. Speaking of beauty... I wanted to talk to you about Function of Beauty. Uh-huh. <laughs> Function of Beauty is the next ad, you guys, our final sponsor for this episode. Scent is perhaps the body's most underappreciated of the senses. It powers your taste, it creates memories, and yes, it even unleashes desire. Function of Beauty's team of formula scientists know this and make scent a key ingredient in every bottle. In case you didn't know, Function of Beauty, uh, they have a lot of wonderful products, but we love the shampoo and conditioner. We've been using it for a very long time. Um, We both have our own personal scents. Eucalyptus. Eric's a eucalyptus man. I'm a lavender gal. Lavender is so relaxing to me. I can't, I just can't shake it. Um, but I, yeah, I really love the lavender. It's very like relaxed. I feel like I'm at a day spa when I open up the bottle. It's funny. That's how I feel about eucalyptus. I thought you were going to say that's how I feel about you, but then you said eucalyptus. I'll know for next time. 
anyway, um, <laughs> Function of Beauty is the world leader in fully customized hair care. They create your unique formula based on a short but thorough quiz to give your hair everything it needs to look and feel its best. Every product is sulfate and paraben free, vegan, cruelty free, and there are over 60,000 real five star customer reviews, just like us, Lovey, just like us. again. Twins. And Function of Beauty fans are absolutely wild about the fragrances as they should be. Your hair has never smelled so amazing. Try tropical mango, sweet peach, crisp pear, or subtler scents such as lavender, which is my jam, rose, and eucalyptus. That's me. Which is Eric. Subtle. If fragrance is not for you, don't even worry about it. You can get unscented as well. Yeah, we really, we enjoy it and love it. I also love that it's so personalized to you, not just with the scent, um, but obviously the contents within. So in the quiz, you get to say what what you need for your hair. And that's what I appreciated about it. You can be like, I want my hair to grow. I have it's a dry scalp. It's specific to you. It's very specific to they you. even put your name physically on yes, the bottle. It says function of Colleen on mine. It's pretty amazing. But yeah, and if your hair needs change, you can change what you get in the bottle. It's really wonderful and you guys should check it out. Um, turn your beauty routine into an aromatherapy session, a tropical getaway even. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash relax to take your quiz and give 20% off on your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. That's functionofbeauty.com slash relax to let them know you heard about it here and get that 20% off your order. Functionofbeauty.com slash relax, relax, relax. Wow, did you even warm up? Uh, no, I did not. But I can hear our sun warming up outside this door. That's yeah. for sure. Rewatching the episode was so fun. Yeah, it was so, so much fun. And, and we've been talking a lot about getting others involved in the show on the podcast to interview them, hear, hear their stories and, yeah. their, and their perspectives. Angela said she wants to do so it. Angela wants to do it, mm-hmm. yeah. So we should definitely Other go people, get someone ben to do Ben Stiller it. is coming up. Yeah, right. I wanna, should I ask him? Should I have another anxiety <laughs> attack and send him another email? Will you be an, on Will you be on your podcast? I wonder if he would. I'm not asking. I can't go through that again. Just do it. Why not? Uh, I'm so scared. What if I, I don't know. I'm scared. Um, but, but yeah, we'll eventually get people on, guys. Don't worry. I, Angela did say she wanted to do it. I think well, we do have someone on today that's coming on today. What? Yeah. Who? The star of the show. Number one on the call sheet. Really? You got Miranda Sings? I got Miranda Sings. Yeah, I sent, oh I, had, I myself had to send uh, an email. Oh, wow. When is she coming? Today. Oh, what time? Right now. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Miranda. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for being on the podcast You're again. You're welcome. I'm a very busy person. I, I totally understand, uh, but we're, we're very appreciative to have you here to talk. We're, we're talking about episode uh, three of Haters Back Off. Well, uh, I don't think I'm in that one. You are. When am I in it? I don't even remember that. Uh, well, you're... Do you remember filming the show for Netflix? Um, I didn't film anything. I just lived it. Right. So I don't know why you're saying it like thanks. What? What, what, what is it like to have a, 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 t- a TV show made about like your real life? It's just normal life for me. I uh-huh. know you cannot relate. But when you're incredible, incredible things happen. Uh-huh. And so, of course, I was just waiting for the day. I was like, hello, when are you going to give me a TV show? You had, you had a sense that like they will make a TV show about your life. Well, obviously, why would they not? And I've just been waiting this whole freaking time for someone to make a movie of me. Uh-huh. And no one has even done it yet. So I'm like... What the heck is the deal with that? You might want to try emailing people. Or have, have you heard of Zoom? Like, I feel like a lot of people make these kind of deals on Zoom these days. Zoom? Yeah. I don't do that kind. I don't like to exercise. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, like, that seems like too much work. And I yeah. don't know how doing dancing on a block of wood would help me get a movie. So, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm not familiar with that yes, the specific Zooms workout. Zoom, Zoom. You know, when they dance, it's like middle-aged ladies in the mall. I've never seen anyone exercising you don't on know blocks what I'm of wood about? in the mall. No, I haven't. Are you kidding me? Uh, what's they ex- go like Zumba. All right, are you going to ask me any questions? Because this is really not a fun day for me to be here. I do not want to be here. Well, we're so no happy offense, to have you. You kind of smell like beef jerky a little bit, which normally is a compliment. Oh, yeah, I, th- I feel like coming from you, that would be a compliment. Mm, normally it would be, but it does not smell like the stick kind. It smells uh, like the spicy kind, and then if you're gonna spritzy kind, the spicy kind. Oh, Learning glitch. That's my that's my function of beauty shampoo. I got this. I got spicy beef jerky. Was the um, scent that I had them put in it. Um. Well, then, so you're also admitting you're a liar because I knew you, you were coming said, today, and I thought you would like you it. You said eucalyptus, which I didn't even know they can make an animal into a 
into a smell of a what animal vine. are you thinking of? Eucalyptines. That's a, it's a it's a tree. No, they would climb on the trees. Koalas. You can call it that, <laughs> but I didn't know you could make that a scent. I thought that'd be illegal. Yeah, uh, it would be, but we're. I think you've you've confused how do you the, get the animal scent? with the tree. But that how he... do you get the animal scent well, into a bottle? Because I have tried getting scents into a bottle. Tell me and more it about doesn't this. Work. Okay. If you try to get a scent, because there have been times where I'm tasting my breath and I'm like, yes, you know, after a good mm-hmm. Taco Bell, so or something like that. And so I get in a bottle, a jar, and I go, oh, it doesn't even cage it. And I'm like, what the heck is a ripoff? So now I've expended my breath. I've wasted it. Mm. Britney Spears, Arna Grande, Taylor Swift. They have perfumes. Uh-huh. And I always Do you think that that's just them breathing into, into several million no, bottles? No, they're not as smart as me. They're putting in uh, floral scents, boring things that you can literally uh-huh. smell for free outside. That's if true. If I wanted to smell like a rose, I'd rub a rose on myself. Mm-hmm. I want to smell like the best smells I ever liked. Name five of the best smells. I just did my breath. I want to make a perfume called Breath. That's it. Breath. There's nothing else? There's lots of good smells. Can, we, can, you, can you just list some good smells for me? Um, tire. Tire. Is great. great smell. Yeah. I know. It's <laughs> really good. <laughs> car. Interior. Are all your smells going to be car related? No. I wasn't finished. <laughs> okay. Car interior after. Let me finish. Uh huh. There's a dank. <laughs> car interior. Dank. Day after food has been eaten within car, a couple fries fell under the chair. Ah, yes. Come on. The, that is a good car smell when there's some fries under the chair. And there is almost always, at least in this family, assorted fries under the uh, car seats. Well, I did an X, so I don't know why you just... You did X? Is that a drug? <laughs> I don't do drugs, <laughs> um, but I said I didn't ex you a question. So I don't know why you randomly said that to me. I'm telling okay. you smells. Right. And you're interrupting okay, so me. We've done three. You're we, again we right now. You're interrupting me. Breath, so please stop. Breath, tire, car, interior, <laughs> when there's fries that have been eaten the day before you, under the seat. Two more smells. I didn't say that many words. That would be ridiculous. You know when you open up the fridge. <laughs> yeah. And there's just a pungence. And you're just so... Oh, that's nice. You have a pungy fridge. No, pungence. Uh-huh. A pungence. And I also love the smell of Band-Aid. Preferably after Does you've been in a, a pool. If you've ever been in a pool with uh. a Band-Aid on and you get out of the pool, it's been a couple of days. I knew a girl in choir once and she smelled always of wet Band-Aids and I was very jealous of that. How much spit is in your mouth right now? There's a lot. I am saving it because that's another scent that I want to save. I thought ah. if I cannot get breath smell into a jar, then maybe it's because it's not liquid form. So if I spit it into a jar, then that makes more my sense spit to me. has yeah. the smell in it. But I have tried this before and it did not work. And I would love if that sound effects. So every time you spray it, instead of like the pss sound, it goes. Oh, oh that's good. <sighs> yeah. It's just different depending on the scent. So it could be, <sighs> which would be like a very intense mm-hmm smell so i knew there was an ulterior motive to you being on the podcast today it was just to plug your breath no scent, you asked about it you line. asked me about smelling like I, the technology in those bottles to have like an audio function i could do it when you do the spray well i'm just saying it's a, it's a lot to um to produce the packaging for that because it would you would need like batteries Did and I, speakers um why are you talking about all that then no one even asks about that you're not a good i was just trying to think of like how, things how would you no actually sense. have a spray bottle that made the specific sounds that you, you're asking anyway, for. Anyway, did you have a question for me? Because I thought this was supposed to be an interview, and now I'm just giving you all my good ideas. Yeah, uh, when, when haters back off... Um, haters back in. Yeah, I know. Why? I, I, haters back off, uh, exclamation. When that came came off... Point, came, exclamation, when point. When that came out on Netflix, exclamation and you saw is it like, for the first time, like, what was your reaction? Well, first of all, I don't like that you are talking over me when I'm trying to respond oh, to I'm you. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said... That from, uh, first of all, my podcast... I asked the questions. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, fair enough. Okay, so anyways, what were you saying? Um, when Haters Back Off first came out on Netflix like, and you watched it, did you watch it? No. Oh, because my next question was going to be, what was I your... I don't have a Netflix subscription. It's too expensive. Mm-hmm. Why, did they, why did they charge me all that money? And then they don't even have the shows I like. What is that? It's like 10 bucks a month. I don't know. It sounds like someone's a sheep and you just went ahead and bought it. Yeah. So you've never seen Haters Back Off? Well, I've seen it because I have eyeballs and I lived it. Uh-huh. 
Okay. And now you're talking about. Oh, other you want me to just like ask you oh, like random oh, questions? This is the Cause this, worst Because this episode in the world. of the podcast we're talking this about. This is not. Do you not understand how podcast works? Do you not understand how every interview works? You go, hello, what is your name? Hello, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite soup? These are the questions you should be asking me. Not, Can we reset? Can we start over? Start over what? We're going to start over the podcast right now. The whole thing? Hi. I don't have time for this. What's your name? You don't know my name? What's your favorite soup? Um, I don't want to give away that information. <laughs> Why would I give like, away secrets like that I'm to you? I'm not asking for your social security number. No one can have a favorite What's soup What's your social person. security number? Six, seven, nine, <laughs> eight, four, three, two, two, six. I think four. you're missing. Yep. There you go. Uh, so that I believe is your actual social security number. You're willing to give that to me, but you will not tell me your favorite soup. Why? Did, well, who cares about your social security number? Those aren't real. Uh huh. Literally, you just say any number. Okay. Do you? Is it? You, does it have to be the same every time? So I was an actor on the show. I just wondered if you I had it. I missed that part. I missed mm. it. Okay. I'm in every episode. Hmm. Okay. Anyways. Well, I just wondered if you had any um, any notes for me, performance wise, yes, character wise. Yes, I have lots of notes for you. Oh, okay, great. Um, I was gonna say. I'm um, scared. <laughs> a, a flat. <sighs> Is a great note for you. Um, <laughs> okay. that's, because that's really, it, I meant like more like acting notes or like performance. Well, you know, yeah, of notes. course you can. That's why I think a flat because you can act it sound like <laughs> you can oh, act it sad. You can act so, it happy. <laughs> you can act it happy, sad, anything. Another good note for you would be um, um, probably a sharp. Okay. What's that? <laughs> I don't want you to sing well, it. I wonder. Yeah, I'm just I wonder, saying that yeah. like it, it's a good note for you because tied... it looks like you to me. Because it's just not a pretty one. I look like an A sharp to you. Uh, well, A flat. <laughs> You're definitely a flat. Uh huh. So you um, think acting is just musical notes and then you say the line what as the musical note? What are you talking about? Note? When did I bring up acting? Oh, you I did. That was literally my question you to you. You did not. You said, do you have any notes for me? Yeah, and I performance was being generous. wise, acting wise. I was being generous and I was telling you a note that I thought went with your personality, which is a very kind thing to do. And I was giving it to you for free and instead you all of a sudden now you're being greedy and wanting more things from me. You're saying, oh, give me a note. I sing a note for you. I give a note to you. With People pay a lot of money to hear me sing. I'm doing it for free. And then they're saying, oh, give me acting notes. Okay, that's different. That'll charge you. That's going to cost you an arm and a leg. I will, pay, I, will, I will pay you. So if you want acting notes, yes. I would say never again. <laughs> When you're just like muttering, I don't know what you're trying to say. Uh -huh. And you're taking too long to talk. You're took, you look nervous. It was, was a character choice, right? These are, uh, these are choices that one makes. It was a bad choice. I, I mean, I. There are good choices. There are bad choices. You chose a bad one. Why do you think the show got canceled? That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Why do you think the show got canceled? Are you saying it's because of me? I didn't say you did. <laughs> yeah. Every show you've been on. <laughs> have well, been that's canceled the, that's the nature every of the business every show you've been on has been every, canceled every job is like mm. is terminal like they all no. shows end uh, hello handmaiden's tale is on well, right, but it did not get canceled because like you're not on fourth it season. but like I, law naked and, and order afraid. like the simpsons would be the exception naked and afraid literally show about sinners who are naked at all times uh -huh. literally against it in the bible thou shalt not be naked you watch naked and afraid this feels no, like a very i'm just against. giving a very good example of a show that i've heard you talk about and it is the sinner show it's still running the only difference between that show and the show those you've been on is that they are canceled naked and afraid is not and the only difference between the two you're not on it so what's the common denominator so you you're saying you, i would be yeah i would eric be eric stockling so there's a lot my, of shows still on tv these days so you would rather i'd be, on any I'd be naked in the woods and afraid no, of something i would not want rather that um, I never want that. What no should I be doing? Uh, this I'm is saying, fine. I can take this were, criticism. I will take this criticism. Will I'm just talk. saying, what should I do with my life then? Listen, what? if you were on Naked and Afraid, let me talk. You've only been talking. It will get canceled. So if you want to cancel, go ahead, go on it. And I'm just saying, that's all I'm trying to say. There's a there's a connection here. Uh -huh. So you need to put it on your resume when you audition for shows. When I'm on shows, they get canceled. Do you still want to cast me? They might have a different idea. <laughs> oh, they might God. think a little more before casting wow. you. Yeah. So think about that. What do you think I should do with my life? I could really see you working at like a frozen yogurt shop. Uh huh. Yeah. I could see you doing that. Pretty good. Um. It's a, it's a lot of weighing of things. Chipotle. You could work at a Chipotle. I don't know. I'm not. I've never been a good um, burrito fold like. Mm. So roller. you have no skills. 
Discernible skills? Absolutely not. No. Well, then just nothing. Mm. What are you What are you doing for money these days? That's not your business. You should never ask a woman that. Anyways, here we go at the end of the episode. Can I please leave now? I'm very bored. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for... It, it's been a while. Thanks for coming. I haven't seen I'm you really since... I'm really excited like, because this episode is... You always have a fan singing at the end of the episode. And I thought it'd be more fun to have a celebrity sing at the end of the episode. Oh, that's great. Because we have a... So I'm going to do it right have, now. Do you, want, do you need a ukulele or a guitar? I do not need you. I just need you to stop talking. So okay. let me do it. You Didn't know if you leave. needed a couple... Okay, here I go. Thanks for listening. All right. Thanks for listening to the episode. You can unsubscribe to it. Click the button that says subscribe. If you're <laughs> already subscribed, you can click it. Uh, subscribe again. It will unsubscribe you. You can don't try that. that. You can leave one star. They don't allow zero Stop. stars yet. So you can try that too. Um, but here is the song. <laughs> you can relax. Eric is not a good at podcasts. <laughs> the world is scary because he is here and he cancels every show this year because he is on all the shows and they get canceled. That's the song song. Bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.